guys. So I get questions all the time about how I style my hair from other stylists to clients in my chair to people in line at TJ Maxx. Um, so I wanted to film a quick video to show you just how I get this look every day. It's super simple. If you can use your thumb and work a curling iron, you can do this look. So I will show you from start to finish how I do this. So first what I want to show you is the products I use to prep my hair. I'm not going to bore you with the details of the blow dry. It's pretty simple. Um, but this is kind of what I start with. I start on fresh, clean hair. And I always start my look with one of the two Polar Proof Blow Dry uh, Primer products. Today I used, my back was in my camera, today I used the Express Treatment Primer. Um, I've recently highlighted my hair so it's a little more sensitive than normal. So I feel like this product is a little better for my um, sensitive hair, but this product's great too. What these do for you, they help speed up your blow dry time, which is a huge deal for me because I have a lot of hair. They also give you some heat protection and they actually make the products you use on top of them go a little bit farther for you. You get a little more kind of boost out of them and helps your blow dry and your style last for a couple of extra days, which is always a good thing. The next thing that I'm going to do is put a little bit of the Diamond Oil Blow Dry Oil on the ends of my hair. You guys, this stuff, if you haven't ever smelled it, it smells like cookies or something. It's delicious. But it also gives a really nice shine to your hair, a nice finish for the ends. So I'll put this on next. And my third product, people think I'm a little bit crazy for this, is Stay High 18. So this is a product by Redkin. It's a high hold gel to mousse product. It's a really great volumizer for your roots. I have a lot of hair. I can get a lot of body to my hair. But what I've found with this kind of look, because my hair can be so heavy, that my roots can actually fall flat and I end up with kind of that triangle look, which is not what we want. So this product, no matter what texture your hair is, is really great. It's going to give you kind of the moldability that your hair needs and a little bit of extra texture to really be able to carry this look off. And the last thing I like to use is I'll spritz a little of the Beach Envy Volume Wave Aid product through my ends. Um, and this really just helps to kind of give it that beachy finished off look. So I'll just spray a little bit through the ends and work that through. So then I go through and blow dry. All I do is just kind of blast it dry with a big paddle brush. Just really get it smooth all over. I'll tip my head upside down so I get some volume at the roots too. Um, but don't spend a lot of time on your blow dry. We're gonna go back in and put all this curl and texture in it. There's no point for you to get it really nice and smooth and sleek and polished when we're just gonna put texture back in it. So don't spend that kind of time on the blow dry. Just get it dry, get some volume in there, and then we'll get started. All right, so that's how I start this look. Now I'm gonna uh, send you back to me in the past and I'm gonna show you how I actually accomplish this with the curling iron. Thanks guys. All right, so let's get started. As you can see, I have dried my hair and it's not anything special right now. Um, I just blasted it dry with my big paddle brush just to get it dry and smooth. So um, we're gonna start with the curling technique. So this is the iron that I'm using. It's an inch and a quarter width. Uh, this is a Hot Tools iron, it's a Marcel, but you can also use just a regular spring iron if that's what you have, it works just as well. But the inch and a quarter, I have personally found, is the most kind of versatile width um, of a curling iron for this sort of technique. If you want a looser curl, go with a bigger iron. If you want something a little tighter, go with something smaller. Longer hair um, that's, that's really, really long, um, a, a bigger iron, like an inch and a half, might be better for you. But um, either way, the technique will still be the same, even if you're using a different size iron. So what I'm going to start with is separating my hair and what I will usually do is separate into about three sections. So I'll really just kind of take this top horseshoe section, um, kind of right above my temples and then just all the way around the back of my head. I'll just kind of section this off and have to get used to the camera being backwards from my mirror. And just section that up out of the way and then the next section I'm going to take going to be right here behind my ears. So I'm just going to section this section off to show you. Get that up out of my way. So if I were doing this in the salon on somebody else at home with myself, I kind of always do it the same way. Now with my shorter hair, I'm not going to curl the nape. I'm going to leave this long. You can see even after I've blow dried it, it still has a little bit of kind of bending curl to it. So I'm not too worried about messing with it. My hair is going to fall down over the top of that and it's going to be fine. If you have longer hair, you might want to curl this section. It just depends on um, the look you're going for, but nobody's really going to see underneath there. So even if you do curl it, don't worry about it too much. It's a good section to start with um, so that you can kind of play around a little bit. And if you mess it up, it's not a big deal and nobody's really going to see it. All right, so since I'm not going to curl this section, I'm going to go ahead and let this middle section down here. And you really want to brush through it really, really well, either with your fingers or if your hair has a tendency to get kind of tangled. 
just kind of brush through it with a paddle brush or a comb or whatever you've got just to get any little tangles out of there. All right, so I'm gonna start by spraying Iron Shape 11, just kind of spritzing it all throughout. You really wanna try not to hit your face and focus it on the ends there. And then again, kind of work that product through just to make sure. So what Iron Shape 11 is gonna do for you is it's just going to give you some extra thermal protection and it's going to give you a little bit of hold. It's going to give you a nice medium hold if your hair um, has a tendency to not hold curl very well. This is a great product for that. So I'm going to start here on this side. So I always like to start right at my face. It just keeps everything balanced and even. And when I pick up a section, I like for that section to be about the width of my curling wand, give or take just a little bit. Just keeps it even and kind of keeps everything balanced. So I'm going to start here right by my face. So I'm going to start curling back away from my face. I'm not going to curl towards my face yet. Um, I find that this gives it a more modern look, just personally a little bit more flattering to me. Um, so I'm going to hold this section straight out from my head and actually start curling in the middle of the section there. Just going to give it one nice bend and then loosen that iron just a little bit, pull it all the way out. But you notice I haven't curled the ends up. I'm just going to curl that till it's hot to the touch on the outside. That's going to be different for everybody and it's also going to depend on the temperature of your iron. I keep mine um, kind of medium high, not all the way high up. Um, and then as you saw when I took that out, I pulled it out and I'll show you that technique on the other side. I'm going to take a section on the other side about the same width and again hold it straight out from my head. And start in the middle, get a good wrap, loosen it a little bit more, one more time up, just till it's hot on the outside. And then when I take it out, I kind of unwind it and leave the iron closed and pull straight down. And as you can see, what that's done for me is given my ends a little bit of a straighter look and keeps the curls from being quite so bouncy. It keeps you from looking too much like Shirley Temple, which is what most people are, don't want right now. Um, all right, so those are my first two curls, both back away from my face, started in the middle bend it, with the bend in them, wrapped it all the way up, and then pulled the ends straight. So the next section I'm going to take is the section right behind my ear. Again, about the same width as my other two have been. Pull that straight out. And this time I'm actually going to curl towards my face. So what this is going to do for me is, um, instead of the curls all eventually kind of lumping together and creating one big wave around the head, this is actually going to help the curls to kind of bump up against each other and give you kind of that messier, peachy kind of look. All of my products just fell down, but too many cords. So I'm going to wrap it all the way up. I'm going to watch your ear on this one. And I'm just going to pull this straight out and straight down. I'm going to loosen that a little bit with my fingers there. Now, if you do have the text, if you have hair that um, holds curl really well and you don't want it to be too curly, you can go ahead and run your fingers through your hair right now while it's warm. If you have hair that doesn't hold curl very well, you don't want to touch it yet. You want to let it cool completely down before you run your fingers through it. So I'm going to let mine sit till I kind of finish this section and then I'll run my fingers through it. I'll take this section here behind this ear, same thing, I'm going to come towards my face this time. Start kind of in the middle of the section, wrap it all the way around once, loosen it just a little bit, pull it straight out, wrap it again until it's hot to the touch, pull it out, and then just pull straight down with my iron closed. So I'm not opening my iron at all as I'm pulling down. If as you're pulling your iron out, you feel like it's actually pulling a little bit too much and maybe pulling on the hair too much, just loosen that just a little bit with your finger um, and it'll it'll slide out a little easier. Because we don't want to break the hair or do any, any damage to the hair with this technique. All right, so now I'm gonna work to the back of the head. This tends to be the most difficult part for people just because it's back of your head, you can't bend your arms back there. So the easiest way for me to show you to go about doing this is again, we're pulling that hair straight out from the head and for me, by pulling it straight out from the head, it allows me to turn my head just enough that I can then get my arms back there with my curling iron. So we came forward with this piece, we're gonna go backwards with this piece. So I get my iron in there, wrap it up once, loosen, wrap it all the way up again. Hot to the touch on the outside. You see, I don't have to let it sit for very long. None of this 20 seconds business. Just a few seconds. All right, let that piece sit. We're gonna come over to this side. I'll show you again. And again, so now we're getting into that hair in the nape. Just pick up what you can, but don't worry about the rest that falls out underneath there. So I've got my 
section. Again, we're curling away from the face. And then we're just gonna just a little bit wrap up the rest of the way. Touch, pull it straight down. Okay, so now I've just got two pieces left in the back, just right in the center here. So I'm just gonna split that right down the middle. And again, hold it out enough that I can kind of reach it um, around the side here. If your hair's longer, this is a lot easier. If it's shorter, it can be a little more difficult, but um, either way, you should be able to, to master it without too much work. So this one's coming towards the face. So put that iron in, wrap it once, wrap it again, and then pull it straight down. One more piece here, oops, again, one product. Here, and up towards the face, Turn around, just watch your arm there. Turn it up at once, just a little bit more, and pull straight down. Alright, so once that back cools off a little bit, I'm going to shake my hands through. Alright, so it's cooled down a little bit in the back, it's um, pretty much cool to the touch now. So now I'm just going to give it a nice spritz of hairspray. I'm going to use a little bit of the Triple Take 32. This is a really nice strong hold, but it's still very touchable, um, very brushable. So I'm just going to give it just a quick spritz, just to kind of hold everything. And now I'm going to start to run my hands through this. So now you can see those curls kind of bump up against each other instead of all clumped together. It gives you a little bit of a messier kind of look. All right, so now we're gonna pull down the top. So this section, um, I'm gonna kind of find my natural part here. This is where my hair likes to part. So as you can see, there's gonna be quite a bit more hair on this side, just because I have a lot of hair, and this is obviously the heavy side because of the part. So I'm actually gonna go right here, just section this hair off and curl this kind of big section here, sort of my fringe section. That up out of my way so these two sides will be more balanced this way and again we're going to do the same thing i'm going to give it a spritz of iron shape 11. Put that through with my fingers all right so again front we're going to go away from the face so some of you might not be used to the way that i'm wrapping this hair on the curling iron which is where i'm starting in the middle of the section just like this here but what that actually does for you, if you can do it that way, is it actually keeps the hair, the heating of the hair consistent all the way throughout. Um, and instead of just getting a bunch of curl down at the end of the hair, you're going to get some curl more up at the base as well. So when you just start at the ends and then wrap it all the way up, you're going to get a really good curl down here, but this hair doesn't always get as hot, and so you can't get as good of a curl. All right, next section here, again, towards the base, straight out. Once, loosen, up again, one more time, this hair's a little bit longer, Pull it straight out. You can also see I give it a little bit of a twist at the end, that's just to kind of keep it all clumped together. I'll show you that again on this side here. Okay. Once in the middle, pull it out. So as I pull out right there at the end, I actually twist it one more time. That's just to make sure those bends, even though I'm pulling them a little straighter, still get a bit of a bend to them. If you want much more of like a beachier, sort of like tighter kind of wave, almost as if you've had it braided and you're pulling it out of the braid, um, instead of just twisting it once as you pull it out, if you'll keep kind of unwinding it and twist this tighter as you pull it out with that curling iron, It'll almost look like a dreadlock when you first take it out. You keep doing that, it'll actually give you a much tighter sort of wave. It's a much, it's a, a much kind of more, I don't know, beachier sort of look, I guess. Almost like a natural kind of curl. So again, going towards the face. So you can see, once you get the hang of this, it should not take you very long to get this the whole head done. And I find, personally, that this actually looks better after I slept on it for a night or two. So, 
the first first day that I do it, sometimes I don't actually like it when I finish it. So I just sleep on it and then it's perfect. Alright, section here. I'm gonna go back away. this back section I'm holding it up and away from my head and that allows me to turn my shoulders and my head just enough so I can get my iron in there and still actually be able to see what I'm doing for the most part. Going towards the face. section here. Alright. Let's make sure that I get a little bit of volume in this section here. So I'm going to hold this hair straight up as I'm going to curl it. So quick, I'll mix it back in. So wrap it up back. One more. Back to the touch. And we just go straight down. Next section. Sometimes on this top section here that's right by my face, I actually like to take my first two sections away from the face. It's kind of up to you. Just I've just found that when I do this, I like the way it looks a little bit better. I also take a little bit of smaller sections right here. So again, I'm going to give it one good stretch so and triple take. Stick it all out of this bowl. Run my hands through it. So you can see a nice beachy wave, nothing too tight, too springy. Um, that still has some good definition to it because all those curls aren't kind of bumping together. And then my favorite thing to finish this off with is my Windblown 05. This stuff is fantastic. It was pretty much made for looks like this. Um, you can see it's got a pretty strong spray. So I actually sometimes like to use this to actually break up the curl. I'll tilt my head to the side and kind of spray it up underneath. And you can see it actually gives it a windblown look, believe it or not. And it smells like the beach. January and cold, so who doesn't like the beach? Just gives it a nice beachier sort of look to it. So there it is. I hope that you learned a lot from this. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video. I'll do what I can to get back to you guys. Um, but I hope that you're able to accomplish this look at home. Thanks. Yeah.